Clipart is one of the most versatile and in-demand digital products, and with AI, creating it has never been faster or more fun. In this video, you'll discover how to design a wide range of Clipart-based images, from cute stickers, simple SEGs and vector-style sublimation designs for print-on-demand to frames and photos. Let's jump in and see how the Clipart Prompt Builder helps turn simple ideas into professional quality designs. Welcome, digital artists! I'm Galia from AI Creative Tools, and today I'm proud to introduce you our customer favorite, fully updated Clipart Prompt Builder. Here's what we'll cover. We'll start by exploring the kinds of images this prompt builder is designed to create, with real examples generated in mid-journey. Then we'll take a closer look at how other AI tools like ChatGPT, Ideogram, Leonardo and Bing handle Clipart generation, highlighting their unique strengths, limitations and standout features. Next, we'll walk you through the updated structure of the Clipart prompt builder, including breakdown of the drop-down menus, and helpful tips to get the best results. After covering the essentials, we'll dive into a hands-on workshop where we create a cute nursery-themed clip art from scratch. We'll also take a quick trip to Canva to finalize our creation. I'll show you how to remove the background and share my tips for designing consistent stickers. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be fully equipped to create awesome clip arts from A to Z, get the most out of our prompt builder and bring your AI creativity to the next level. As always, all drop-down options and their content have been carefully selected and tested to match the needs of Clipart creation specifically. Let's explore the wide range of digital products you can create using the Clipart prompt builder. First, you can generate both flat and 3D Clipart stickers and digital illustrations set against clean backgrounds. Choose from a rich variety of objects, people, animals and everyday items styled in cartoon or artistic aesthetics. You can create images using different techniques, from simple vector-style designs to watercolor and other hand-painted looks. These images can be used or sold as is, or applied in sublimation, web design, marketing assets and a wide range of principles. Second, you can create photorealistic elements ideal for scene creators, mood boards, or other visual storytelling purposes. Third, design invitation frames made of floral motifs, stars, or other decorative elements. Fourth, generate custom badges and labels that are perfect for product branding, junk journaling, or crafting projects. Fifth, make scrapbook embellishments, an excellent addition to memory books, junk journals or any scrapbooking hobby. Sixth, craft black and white SVG designs that can be used for cutting machines or as icons for websites and apps. And finally, generate sets of clip art, icons or stickers, ideal for creating cohesive bundles in a consistent style or for producing multiple variations of a single object on one sheet. Now, let's take a closer look at how different AI tools handle the creation of various clipart images. In my experience, Midjourney continues to stand out with the broadest range of styles. However, other tools also deliver impressive results depending on your specific needs. Take a look at the images on the screen to form your own impressions of how each performs. The new ChatGPT image generator is currently the only tool I know that can generate clipart with a transparent background right from the start. It's a major plus. However, it typically outputs just one or two images at a time and can be a bit slow. What most people don't realize is that it still uses DALI under the hood to draw the images, while the ChatGPT 4.0 model acts as the brain, improving the prompt understanding and overall outcome quality. Bing's image generator, which also uses DALI, can deliver somewhat similar results, but with less precision and no context polishing. The variety of styles for DALI is decent, but still a bit limited. Ideogram shines when it comes to vector-style images with solid colors, making it perfect for sublimation designs. 
It's also the best at handling text in images. But there's also a downside for this. When the magic prompt is on, it often adds unwanted text to images, even when not requested. For clipart, we recommend using the design and general models. Leonardo is another nice platform for clipart creation. We've tried all of these default models. Phoenix, Concept Art and Albedo provide nice results with a consistent white background, while Anime, for some reason, can't make an image on a solid background at all. And it's a pity, because Leonardo's Anime model is one of the best in this style. To sum up, the AI clipart space is full of strong contenders. While Midjourney remains the top choice for style variety and artistic richness, other tools may be better suited for specific tasks or simpler designs. Now it's time for the structure of the clipart prompt builder. You'll see how to find what you need fast and what specific terms and other things to enhance your workflow you may find here. The tool is organized into four main sections – Format, Object, Color and Style and Midjourney parameters. In the Pro version, you'll also find exclusive drop-downs that offer even more control and flexibility. Each selection you make contributes directly to building your final prompt. By default, the digital product is set to clipart with a white background. And we've carefully added an explanatory phrase to guide the AI in generating images that are cleanly separated from the background and not cropped at the edges. While it may not work perfectly every time, it succeeds in about 95% of cases, giving you a strong foundation for creating high-quality extractable designs. We recommend starting by selecting your digital product and main style. These two choices set the direction of your design. Whether you're creating a standard clipart, a decorative frame, or a scrapbook embellishment, this is where you define the type of image you want. While the sticker option is available, we generally advise against using it, unless you are specifically testing that format. Stickers often come with inconsistent outlines, added shadows, or appear embedded into photo mockups all of which make it difficult to cleanly extract the design from the background. The main style drop-down lets you choose a broad visual format, like flat, 3D or photorealistic, or go with a specific artistic technique, such as watercolor, ink or vector-like. Choosing the right combination here helps the AI understand your creative intent more clearly and improves the final output. If you're feeling a bit unsure at first, don't skip the visual examples sheet. It features sample outputs for all 12 digital product types and 22 main styles, along with the simple prompts used to create them. This gives you a clear visual reference for how each drop-down choice affects the final image, helping you make confident selections and better understand the builder's full potential. The object section helps you describe your subject in as many detail as you need. The object drop-down includes a wide range of options – humans, fantasy creatures, animals, nature elements, everyday objects, and even popular festive icons. As always, you can also type in a custom object or combine it with a drop-down selection. Your custom input will take priority in the final prompt, giving you full control over what the AI generates. The object details drop-down appears before the selected object in the final prompt and is especially useful for adding more depth when describing human or animal characters. It also includes options for quantity and era, which can apply to non-animated objects as well. The blank option is particularly handy when you're creating a label or a badge. The action clothing, view surroundings, and Emotion Vibe drop-downs are self-explanatory and organized into clearly labeled sections, making it easy to find exactly what you need. One useful option you'll find in the View Surroundings drop-down is Empty Center Area, perfect for designing frames with space in the middle for text or other content. The Background drop-down is focused solely on changing the color of the backdrop. It avoids adding complex decorations, which is essential for maintaining clean and extractable designs in the clipart format. In the Color and Style section, we start with Color Selection. 
You can be as general or specific as you like. Begin with the generic options to define overall tone, lightness or saturation. For more precise colors, use the basic and monochrome color palettes. If you're aiming for a cohesive and rich visual feel, choose from the curated mood boards which ensure consistent and well-balanced color schemes. You can also enter custom colors, which will take priority over the drop-down selection if both are used together. While we've already touched on styles by selecting from the main style drop-down in the format section, for clipart we highly recommend exploring the additional styles. This drop-down includes well-known cartoon-inspired techniques such as Disney and Studio Ghibli, alongside a variety of aesthetic styles like boho, cottagecore and classic artistic approaches such as batik or folk art. To help you choose the right style for your project, once again take a look at the visual examples sheet. It features sample outputs for each style, giving you a clear idea of what you get in the end. The specifications drop-down does exactly what the name suggests. It lets you fine-tune your design with extra details like symmetrical, quirky character or other stylistic touches. You can also use the custom text field below to add any specific instructions, not just related to style, but also to the object, composition or any other creative element you want to include. This drop-down is available exclusively in the Pro version, but basic users can still customize their design by manually typing into the same custom text field giving everyone the flexibility to personalize their prompts. Last but not least is the Midjourney Parameters section, designed specifically for Midjourney users. It's straightforward to use. You can switch between Midjourney versions, adjust the stylized value to control the level of detail, and set your preferred aspect ratio. Keep in mind that higher stylized values often result in more visually detailed images, and in some cases, they may even introduce a 3D-like appearance, depending on the style and subject. You can also use negative prompting to exclude unwanted elements from your images. For instance, I've noticed that Midjourney version 7 often adds dots or hatching to illustrations, so including terms like no dots can help reduce this effect. Similarly, this model tends to generate images on watercolor paper or with other unwanted textures, especially when using higher stylized values. To minimize this, try adding no watercolor paper or no texture to your prompt to guide the AI more precisely. Pro users have the added benefit of customizing their experience by adding their own terms to the table on the right, just like with all other drop-downs in the builder. Simply type your own custom entries to the designated cells and they'll automatically appear at the top of the corresponding drop-down menu. In addition, Pro users can use custom text fields for image, omni and style references, features specifically useful when working with Midjourney on Discord. If you're using the Midjourney official website, you can simply drag and drop images into the prompt area like this. Use reference images to define a general look, ensure style consistency, or apply an omni-reference if you want the same character or object to appear in your new image. For more in-depth guidance on using Midjourney parameters, be sure to check out our Midjourney starting guide, prompt builder basics, and pro feature guides, available on our website. If you're using a different AI tool to create your clipart images, you can usually apply parameters through dedicated buttons in the tool's interface. In the case of ChatGPT, you can simply write the parameters directly into your prompt. And finally, welcome to our workshop. Today we'll be creating several nursery-themed clipart pieces in a pastel color palette which really inspires me, especially in spring. I've already done some experimenting to get closer to the style I like, so we'll start with a ready-made prompt featuring a fantasy clip art of magic potion bottles. I also like to intentionally include an outline, since by default it's less likely to appear. Let's see what we get. As you can see, even with a detailed prompt that describes the image quite clearly, the results still vary in style. 
I'll show you how to handle that in a moment. This second image has an obvious sticker style border, which I don't want. If you encounter the same issue, the builder includes a special negative prompt. Just use no sticker outline. That usually solves it, unless you've selected sticker as a digital product type, in which case it will override the negative prompt, so don't miss the detail. Back to our images. I like the last one the most. Now I want to create more clip art in the same style, just with different objects, since there is such a wide variety of nursery themes. Note that in this prompt the object appears twice, so be sure to update both instances. Otherwise, you can go back to the builder and change it only once. It will automatically update everything. To make the style more consistent than what we saw in the first row of images, I'll drag the image I liked most into the style reference field under the prompt. Not the image reference, but the style one. Let's repeat the process a few more times. If you notice small flaws, you can easily fix them using the built-in Midjourney editor, just like this. Oh, look at these kittens, aren't they adorable? At the same time, I think that llamas lack a strong outline, so I'll try adding more reference images with clear outlines. I'll also try other objects. The new llamas have a better outline now. The pandas, though, look a bit sad. But no worries, we can fine-tune the prompt to fix that. The mushrooms look fine, but I'll rerun the prompt without increasing the stylized value to get a simpler result. The new llamas now tend to have a frame, which we can easily remove in the editor or by adding no frame to the prompt, either manually or through the builder. The new pandas turned out much better. And the simplified mushrooms now have a stronger, cleaner outline thanks to resetting the stylized value. Compare them to the pandas with the higher stylized parameter. They have a more distressed outline due to the image being more complex. And there you have it! A basic clip art collection in a consistent style, plus learning a few simple tricks to refine your results along the way. Now, let's choose a few images we like and bring them into Canva. You can drag each image onto a separate page and click the Background Remover tool. To check the result, change the background color and, as you can see, Canva handled it really well. If you want to turn the images into stickers with a clean outline, you can also do that in Canva. Select the image, go to Edit, Shadows, choose Outline, set your preferred color and adjust the thickness. To speed things up, you can copy the style and paste it onto the next image just repeat the process until you're done. And remember, when working with clipart and stickers, always download your images in PNG format with a transparent background. This feature is only available in Canva Pro as far as I know. You're now all set to start creating powerful prompts and turn your ideas into beautiful clip arts with the help of the Clip Art Prompt Builder. May your creative journey be filled with inspiration and rewarding results. Check the video description for links to our website, Etsy shop, and other useful resources. Thank you for watching.